back to another adventure in the kitchen so a nice simple recipe with one two three four ingredients here so these white beans I'm going to talk about them a little bit everywhere I go I see these white beans I don't know what they're called you can google them and match up what they look like to get a description but everywhere I go I see them I see them all over the Mediterranean Morocco Italy the Balkans very popular in Asia also so I have 900 gram there, would have used a kilo if I had it, but that was the packet, 900 gram. They've been soaking overnight with a tablespoon of bicarb of soda. So that helps soften them a lot quicker than just plain water. So I'm just going to drain, I'm going to drain that water off and wash them. What I'm going to do then, it's got a nice big white cabbage here, a good kilo. Um, I'm going to ch uh, coarsely chop that. I've got about 150 gram of fresh parsley. That's going to be coarsely chopped. And all I'm going to do is put some all-purpose seasoning in. If you don't have this all-purpose seasoning, not to worry. All it is, the ingredients are salt and dried vegetables. So you get a nice taste. And that's it. So let's get chopping and washing. We'll come back when we're ready to put it on top of the stove. So all I've done is thoroughly washed them, no bubbling anymore, nice clear water, any bits of skin that rise to the top, you can keep in really, but I put them in the bin. So I need double the amount of water as beans, so that's about up to my um, half my hand and again. So plenty of water and I'm going to let that come to a boil. In the meantime I'm going to chop my parsley and cabbage. So how I prepare my cabbage, little tip, don't take anything you know for granted, some others might not know. Look at that, it looks really nice doesn't it? So I just take the outer layers off because you never can trust other people when it comes to fertilising. So I cut it into quarter and I just cut that stem out, exactly like I did with the cauliflower for the cauliflower curry the other day. So do subscribe to the channel. I've got well over 500 recipes now. Just going to chop that up. And this is just the way I'm doing these beans. There are thousands of different recipes for these beans. Absolutely thousands. Some like it spicy, some will curry it, some will have it with spinach, other vegetables. The choice is endless. This is just how I'm doing it today, nice and simple. And I want, I want those chopped up coarsely, not too big, not too small. So that's that. And again with the parsley now, it looks like a big bunch at first. You wash it and it sort of gets a bit heavier and coarsely chopped. Just want to make sure there's no big stalks or anything. This will be floating in the soup even after it's boiled down. And that's it really, nice and coarse. Smelling great. So, as those beans are heating up, I want to put about a tablespoon of that seasoning in. You can just use salt if you want, or any flavouring you want, obviously. So I'd rather use less than more at the moment, because it does contain quite a lot of salt. I bought that in Lidl's for £1.50. So, you know, they sell it all over Europe because Lidl's is all over Europe. So that's looking good and I'll taste it and I might add a little bit later. So let's just bring that to the boil. So last night I started making this bread that's been rising. A little bit of an optional extra. I think it's going to go so well. But let's go back to the beginning and how this happened. You might have seen my spelt and rye japati video that I made last week on my channel. Wasn't particularly impressed with the japatis. Yes, they were nice and healthy and it was not crunchy, but it was firm enough. You could really use the japatis made out of this uh, flour as a spoon. So all I did last night is got about five cups of spelt and wheat flour, it's whole meat, whole meal. I've got about a teaspoon of dried yeast 
about three cups or four cups of lukewarm water, room temperature water, slightly warm I think, and about three teaspoons of salt. I mixed it all up and you can see the pumpkin seed. I mixed it all up into a coarse sticky dough and I left it rest. I let it rest, should I say, for about 14 hours or overnight, you know, so it's something you can do the night before. It takes a couple of minutes. And here I am just kneading it now. I'm just getting it into um, a palatable state, a nice ball of dough. That's going to go in the oven. We'll have a look at that once it happens, but I just think it's going to be so healthy and tasty and it's really going to accompany the bean soup so well. I haven't made bread for ages, but yeah, and it uses up that flour that I don't want to use for chapatis. So that's that really. That will make a nice loaf into a baking tin in the oven and obviously put it in the oven. And we'll come back once everything's cooked and uh, my beans are boiling now. We'll come back to the beans and add the cabbage. So there's my beans that are boiling. Do you sift the scum off? It's debatable. All it is is protein separating. So let's sift some of that off. Or should we just put it onto the cooker? It'd be really messy. <laughs> so that's nice and boiled anyway. It's been probably around 15 minutes because it's quite a large bowl. So we just need to bring that down. And we're going to add the cabbage. We're going to let it come back to the boil and probably boil it for about 25 minutes again. So, it's been about 10 minutes now. Now, I've got the oven preheated. Here's my bread. When I say I haven't made bread for ages, I mean this type of bread. I've made plenty of Indian bread. Anybody that's familiar with the channel knows that. So, I've placed it into a baking tray. Hope it doesn't rise too much because I've only given myself an inch of leverage. And I've just scored at the top with a knife just to stop it rising so much. So the oven's going to be on about 180 degrees and I'm going to cook it until it's golden. In the meantime, cabbage is sweating down a bit. We'll come back, add the parsley, we're going to cook that for longer and we're going to have a look at the bread. Bingo, job done. So a little bit off topic, but I'm going to be making a pizza recipe before long. Here we are with the capers. Anything I had available, we've got capers, we've got red onion, yellow peppers, plenty of chili flakes, nice dough. So yeah, just a taster of what's to come on the channel shortly. So that's been about 25 minutes, got some water reduction, a lot of things are floating to the top, which indicates they're cooking now with that very generous amount of parsley. And I'm gonna cook it now for another 25 minutes. So give that a stir, we'll come back shortly. So what's great about this, it's nearly ready, nice and soft, is that as you, when your butter beans cook, when you stir them, I recommend stirring lightly, little bits of fragments come off the butter beans and thicken the sauce. So that's almost ready, I'm just going to give it a taste. And we need some more seasoning in that, salt to taste and it's done. So, the thumbnail is what that looks like once it's cooked, cooled down, ready to serve. We're just waiting for our bread now. Yeah, one slight correction. When I said I was boiling the parsley for another 25 minutes, I meant about 10 on a simmer. So, one correction. <laughs> so, just look at that, nice and clear at the top. Wow, perfect consistency. Tastes absolutely great. So limited ingredients as well. Bread is looking fantastic too. We'll come back shortly. So here's my bread straight out of the oven. Absolutely delicious. That's going to be um, taken out of the baking tray and allowed to cool. The thumbnail is what the combo of these great recipes, really easy to follow and simple and healthy, look like. Thank you very much for watching.